Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome back to my weekly show where I help you build a career you love. Today, it's an all out Q&A for you. I got a few announcements and then we're gonna spend the entire hour on you and your questions. So one of the first announcements, I, I, wanna, I wanna get the bad news out of the way really, really fast. Actually, let me turn my little Slack thing on so because I think my partner in crime is beeping me and I'm seeing it on the watch that we're all good. Here's the bad news, and I want to I want to give you that right away. I'm because of my awful <laughs> uh, travel schedule and schedule schedule. This is the last time you're going to see me for a regularly scheduled live office hours until June 27th. 27. Wait, it's May 30th, June 27th. So I mean, some of you are going to see me in the premium programs. And some of you might even see me live, actually, and in person. I'm going to get to that in a second. But I just want to let you know, one thing that you definitely should do as, um, you know, as, as someone in, in, uh, in my community is we put together a Mile Walk Academy uh, live events calendar. So it has all the free live events like live office hours it has the special live events like some of the the web live webcasts that we do it has some of our premium programs in there like my leadership monthly live and my job search boot camp and all the other live stuff that we do so it's all in there you can access that uh, on the mile walk academy website up at the top there's a link that says live calendar kara will probably drop it in the chat here uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a few minutes, but you can access that. You can actually even sync it to your, to your personal calendar of choice, whether it's Outlook or Gmail calendar or iCal or whatever you're using. And it would be good, although I'm going to be away from live office hours for a few weeks, uh, I do have other live events in June and in July, I've got a ton of them. And one of the things I want to, on, on, on the good side, is we do have a three-day live event uh, June, July 9th, 10th, and 11th. So that's going to be um, a, a, a job searching heavy three day workshop. So you know you, you want to make sure that you you're available for that if or or you watch the replay, but just make sure that you know that it's coming. Another thing is for those of you that are interested in my job search boot camp, we have another live coaching session tomorrow. That one is on salary stuff. So if you jump in the job search boot camp, you get the whole boot camp. I'm not going to go through it, but I just want to let you know it's it's available. You can join us tomorrow. Uh, there's a live session at noon Eastern, and then in Ju in June we have another session where we're actually going to show you how to hunt down specific people using some uh, boolean that you'll put in in your Google search bar. We'll show you how to find people that you want to target. We'll show you how to get their email addresses and all that good stuff. So we're going to go through all that demo, demoing in, in June. And then July and August, we have a, like a five week in a row run of the boot camps. There's a lot of live coaching there. Uh, because you are here with me live, if you email me at support at milewalk.com, I'm happy to give you $100 off the boot camp uh, to not knock it down 100 bucks. So so let me know if you're up for that. Uh, I did mention the live calendar. One thing I do want to mention that where I'm actually live live, as in live and in person, no camera between us, is if you are in the San Francisco uh, Bay Area next Friday, so a week from tomorrow, June 7th, my wife and I are going to be there and uh, would invite you to join us for a drink if you want. Uh, you could have Mrs. Lasavita tell you all the stories you want about me and uh that'll be three o'clock local time it starts you don't have to come at three we'll be there at three of course and i'm sure we'll stay into the evening it's at the pub in Deli square if you're on my email list you're going to get an email about it tomorrow with the um you know with the information and one other thing i want to mention is if you have not grabbed this little beauty this is the physical copy but we have the online version for you. Uh, all you need to do is, is click a button. It's the Mile Walk Academy uh, catalog of offerings. It is everything that we have to offer you and how to access it in one spot. So you can load that on your, you just click a button, it downloads it right to your computer. You'll have a little letter from me. You'll have a table of contents with everything related to 
the calendar, the blog, my books, the live uh, shows, the, the recorded webinars, the special events, write-ups on the premium programs, all that good stuff is in there. It is a, it's a beauty. We've been getting, I've been getting tons of emails from people this week who've grabbed it, said they absolutely love it to make their lives easier. So, so Kara will put that in the chat as well. So that's, that's what we've got going on. And in honor of, we sort of have sun in Chicago. I went with the flower, flowery coffee mug today with, I don't know, some get wellness tea. Mm. Because I am feeling a little run down because I've been working like a dog. Okay, but I'm fresh and frosty and happy to be here with you. All right, so let's see. Lee, hey to you. Kevin Gomes, how are you? From Toronto, Canada. Spent the last two years trying to start a business that didn't go anywhere. Should my resume and LinkedIn show me still employed or show that role is over and appear unemployed? Well, Kevin... What you didn't tell me is, I know the business didn't really go anywhere. If you are still, uh, you know, trying to make it work until you find a job, I would leave it as employed. I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to start a business and perhaps not getting it to take off. There's a million reasons why that can happen. Uh, I'll tell you the most important thing that goes through my head when somebody gives a business a couple years. Number one, uh, I, while I'd love to see you give it a, a, a longer bit of effort, I also realize that two years can be a blink of an eye or it can be an eternity, depending on your personal situation, what your business is, the market for it, where you're located, you know, where you're located against what it is that you're offering. Some products sell better in certain geographies and, and those kind of things. I don't know what your what your business is, if it's a product or a service, but Whenever I see somebody who gives it a go and tries to run their own business, I don't feel anything but proud for them. I really, I really do. It, it is a, it takes a special type of person to want to do that, and especially somebody who gave it two years. So I would be proud of that. I would not hang my head in the least. I'm sure there were, there are some people on this earth that will, you know, hold it against you, but I would not worry about them. I think that it takes a lot of guts. And I would rather people try and then recognize, you know, in whatever your situation was, recognize maybe that it either was not for them or it was not for them at this moment, right? Depending on what you, I mean, I know a lot of people who try to start businesses and then the cash flow doesn't come through and, you know, they have husbands and wives and kids and family, families and pets and all that, have mortgages and all that good stuff. So it, it gets a little, it gets a little difficult. So no, I, if it was me and I was still operating the business or there was some way that I could articulate that I'm still operating the business, I would leave it. I certainly wouldn't change my LinkedIn profile. Uh, if you want on your resume to show that you are wrapping up or have wrapped up, that's perfectly okay. The, the good thing about that is on the positive side, employers will know that you are immediately available in a lot of employers like that. So I hope that helps. Mike Lowry, there is a familiar name, face, and a beloved Mile Walk Academy member. How you doing? Okay, let me see. You probably got one of those it depends uh, questions, answers. And yes, my... <laughs> It's like a, he's a beloved dude. Okay. How long do you wait when promotion is, can be tied to growth, even if path is defined? A uh, company is new to Oregon, but been in Michigan for nine years. And Mike, I am actually, bud, I'm not sure. I'm not even, I'm not sure what you're specifically asking me. So how long do you wait when promotion is tied to growth? I, is that personal growth? Is it corporate growth? And even if the path is defined, there could be several career paths for you. Um, the fact that the company is new uh, to one of the states in the U.S. You know what, bud? Listen, I want to answer your question, but I need more insight. Can you just head to the head to the bottom of the chat? Give me a little more color. Go ahead, type in a few spots if you need to, or or. Or you, because you're a boot camper, can email support at malwalk.com and Kara will look at it and then she'll slack it to me and then I will go from there. Let's do that because I want to get, get the answer to your question. All right. P. Rogers, 50. How you doing? How do I get my resume past the ATS to get interviews? So a couple, couple different things here. 
to answer your specific question, let's take that first. Whenever, uh, and actually P. Rogers and everybody else, I don't know if, uh, if you know this, but at this very moment right now, and for the last many, many months, anybody who has joined my job, uh, sorry, my, my Mile Walk Academy community, meaning you've gone to the Mile Walk Academy site and you put your name and your email in, you said, yes, I want to subscribe, or you've downloaded a template or a cover letter, a resume template or a booklet, or you've attended a webinar and you have not unsubscribed. In the welcome piece uh, pieces that we give you, we, we give you a kind of a welcome packet, then we give you a couple of emails, like we wait a day or two, we give you an email, we wait a day or two, we give you another email introducing you to this to this community. One, the reason I'm going through this is one of those emails is my four step, it literally, the subject line is like my free four step uh, way to beat the applicant tracking system for your resume. And in that email, there's some instruction that I go through and here's, here's what I would recommend to you. Number one, I want you to optimize your resume. That's the first thing. So get the ultimate professional resume template of mine. That's free in the video, build your ultimate professional resume. And there's a template there. You can grab that and you can grab it on the Mile Walk Academy, the front page, but there's a, a 19 minute video that you can watch to walk through it. So I'd start there. I have a free webinar. It's titled Three Secrets to Get Your Resume Noticed. My recorded webinars now, as of a couple months now, are on demand. You can watch them whenever you want. You don't need to just go in, hit your email, bang, we send you a message, and we route you to a page where you can watch it at your leisure. Go and do that. That'll give you an idea about how somebody looks at your resume so that when somebody sees your resume, it's going to be appealing to them. The third thing that I would do is I would make sure that when you look at the job descriptions that you are applying for, you are watching the nomenclature in the job description and that the nomenclature in your resume is matching up from a keywords standpoint. So I don't know what it is that you do, but just as a quick example, if you know, for, for somebody who's in, in sales, there's many different ways to say sales. You could say business development, business development director, account executive, account manager, so on and so forth. Now, the, the company that you're applying to, it might have different nomenclature for that. Just make sure that it matches and make sure that the things that it's calling for and the desired traits and skills and all that other good stuff, those words are in your resume. So you just need to massage your resume. Don't do a wholesale new resume, just massage the nomenclature and make sure the keywords are in there. Then what I would do, and Kara can probably pop in my specific job scan link. There's a tool called JobScan. Uh, it's jobscan.co. And then if you put slash Andrew dash La Civita, that's a link to my referral link. They give me a couple of bucks if you end up registering for their tool. So it's free for a month where you could take the job description that you're applying to in the applicant tracking system and look at, and take your resume and you paste it in these boxes and then the tool will tell you how you're scoring percentage wise on whether you're matching what the applicant tracking system is looking for. The tool is good, it's not perfect, but it is a smart thing to do. It takes mere minutes. It will surface those you know, those, those things. It will tell you some adjustments you can make. Use your head. Don't, don't just take the system's word for it. Use your head. Make sure that it, it makes sense. Massage it and then go. Now, that's how I would do that. And if you are, if you are not in my community and you, you get on my email list, you will get that email that I'm talking about with these instructions. Now, if you're already in my community, we don't keep sending you this welcome process. If you're already in our, in, you know, in, as a member of, of my community, we don't, we try not to, I mean, I know I send a fair number of emails, but I, we try not to overflow you with stuff that, that you've already seen. So that's what I would do there. Now, my recommendation, though, is never to use the applicant tracking system if you can avoid it. And without going into all the different techniques that I would go through there, the one place I would suggest that you go to is the Mile Walk Academy blog. If you go to the Mile Walk Academy, you click the blog up at the top, 
and you head to the blog, it's on a WordPress site, in the search bar, I want you to type ATS, and an article will come up. There will be a number of them, and one of them is how to bypass the applicant tracking system. There's another article there about how to break the rules when you job search. Those articles will help you circumvent the applicant tracking system and get around it in different ways that you could submit your resume to companies. Check those out. I hope that helps you. All right, P. Rogers, wish you knew your first name. All right, Daryl Newman, how are you? Used your suggested cover letter template when there is no job opening. The few responses received indicated that I should be submitting my resume to HR and to the applicant tracking system. No interviews need help. Okay, so first thing is a couple things. Let's let's really dissect what Daryl is saying here. Now, first thing he said is, I'm using your cover letter template where there is no job opening. If you are new to my community, welcome. If you do not know what I have out there, there is a video typed, you know, how to apply when there's no job opening. In that video, I give you a cover letter. It's seven sentences. It's pretty good. If you, if you use that and you target HR or hiring officials or whatever, that's what Daryl is referring to. Now, the one thing that I would say that I could read into the rest of what he's asking is the few responses. So if you only got a few responses, that's not really a great sampling of whether the technique is working or not. You need to send out a good number of these. The second thing is I would use the no job opening cover letter if I was targeting the human resources people and the recruiters. If I'm targeting somebody other than HR or the the um, recruiters, I would use my boss hunting cover letter. Go type boss hunting in my YouTube channel or in my blog and it will pull up the technique where you're trying to target a hiring official or a potential hiring official or somebody of seniority in the unit or area or division or region or whatever it is that you're trying to get into. Now, if somebody says, then go and put it in with HR or the or the applicant tracking system, what I would have done in that case, if somebody gets back to me and says that, then I would say, I would be happy to send this to human resources. Is there somebody in particular who's responsible for this role? Can you give me his or her email address and name? That's what I would have done there. If they don't say send it to HR and they say put it in the applicant tracking system, you swing back and say, Hey, happy to do that. Thank you for your response. Happy to do that. Is there somebody in HR or recruiting who I can contact and follow up with once I put it in the applicant tracking system to make sure that they actually receive it? You know how these systems are. Would you mind giving me that? And and, and have dialogue like that. And the, the one other thing that, that I always preach to my uh, job search boot campers is every time you send something out, the, fir- the thing that ought to be going through your mind is this is a networking opportunity. When that person gets back to you and says, um, you know, hey, we, we don't have anything. Uh, thank you very much. Then you need to respond back and say, okay, is there any, you know, you can see I'm job searching. Is there any, or you know, people you know that might be able to use my services? Is there any organizations you think I should look at? Anything you can do to keep the dialogue going. If you send it to somebody and they say, okay, send it in to the applicant tracking system or HR or whatever, or just simply put it in the, you need to swing back and then make sure you're following up to get more data so that as you do put that into the system or however it is you're going to route it in there, you've got more data. You can try to go a little more direct and you can follow up if need be. So that's what I would do there. But for you, Daryl, so, and for everybody to know this, the boss hunting technique For many of you, so many of my, not all, but a large percentage of my community are seasoned workers. And seasoned doesn't mean old. I mean people in their 30s and above. We we certainly have demographics where there are a number of individuals who are in college and recent college grades and in their 20s, but there's a predominance. And that's just, just statistics, right? There's just more people that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s that are working than there are people in their 20s. So most of you are in positions or higher earnings 
earners or or more tenured or or just simply uh, more tenured workers that should be taking advantage of the boss hunting technique and that technique ought to yield more uh, responses uh, from the people you're sending it to because of the specificity and nature of the technique I'm not going to go into the whole thing because you all can go and watch the video it's not very long and you can grab the templates there's two templates with the boss hunting technique there's one template if you if you are able to identify somebody but you don't know if they have an opening on their team and there's another template if you if you can identify somebody and you do know there's an opening on their team so Daryl try that I think that will help you and 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 keep at it keep at it you the, the statistics are not really you know if I was trying to sell a product and a hundred people looked at my sales page and the first three bought it and the next 97 didn't um, that's gonna make me feel differently than if the first 97 who look at it don't buy it and then the next three buy it it's still the same stat it's still three percent so for you though you should be batting higher than that I right, hope that helps Karis how are you and Fareed how are you hi Andy wait I, I think I saw this one you're in Austria okay it's 1 15 it's I don't know what time it is right now. It's eleven twenty here. Uh, can you please explain how to find one's ability and talent and career change accordingly after age thirty-five and have many unused degrees? Yes, I'm actually going to give you a bunch of places to go for that. And just so everybody knows, I made a career change at thirty-eight and forty-nine, so you can do this. That's the first thing. Here's what I would watch in the order in which I would do it. So, first thing is I did a video that I loved doing. I think it's a darn fine video, better than most that I've made, called How to Find Your Gift. I just put it out a couple of weeks ago. It's, it's 16 minutes. Watch that. As in, like, when we're done right now, go watch that. That's the first thing. Second thing that I would do is you could check out, I have a career changer playlist. Because once you figure out what to do, you need to figure out then how to sell yourself. Actually, I got one other step. Watch how to find your gift. Then watch a video that I shot called how to choose the right job. That will get you dialed up to identifying the things that are important to you. Then what I might do is I might go to a site called YouScience, Y-O-U Science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E, I think it's .com, and uh, I would check that out, and that will help you based on your interests and your skills and your degrees and all that other stuff, because I think you said you know, you've got unused degrees. Uh, that will help guide you. And then if that facilitates, if those steps, those three steps facilitate clarity for you about what it is that you want to do, then I have a career changer playlist that gets more tactical with making that happen. And uh, I would go check that out and I would watch the whole playlist because there's a number of things from deciding, uh, creating your brand so that you look knowledgeable when somebody's evaluating you, and then also tactically from a resume standpoint, there's an interview video, like how career changers can win the interview in 10 steps. All that stuff is there. By the way, folks, not to be funny, just about every problem you have, I've shot a video for it. It's out there on my YouTube channel. However niche you think it is, just go type that in the search bar. Stay-at-home mom, put type that in. Your military vet, type that in. I mean, like, career changer, type that in. Whatever you can imagine, go there. And, and check it out. There's 175 videos that are public and a whole bunch more that are not yet that, that, um, that will help you with that. So I hope that helps you. Uh, I would definitely, and by the way, uh, Science. I am, have no affiliation with them. I've communicated with them. I need to basically follow up to see if there's a partnership there that we can have. What I would love is if anybody actually goes and uses the site and I think there might be a small fee to run this test for you, and it gives you a, lo a lot of data. If any of you do that, can you please email me at support at milewalk.com and tell me what happened? Like, did you love it? Did you not? What's it do well? What's it missing? I will read your email and I will respond to you. 
So let me know because I would love I would love that. Um, Kara, do, uh, how far down is that question? Can you tell me? Because I, I I can certainly answer that, but I want to I want to keep going. How? Just let me know how far down that is. Okay. Um, can you give me a timestamp? Uh, not the at sign. There you go. Okay. I see, and we're still in the tens. Okay. All right. Let me answer. Let me answer a few more. Thank you. That's cool. Uh, sorry, Kara and I are just going back and forth here, and and we we try to mix up the. I go in. By the way, if you just joined us, it's eleven twenty-five. I'm going in order of the chat to ask the questions. Um, to answer the questions, your chat might be live, but you might not see everybody's who I'm reading. So I'm not ignoring you. I'm I'm just I'm trying to go in order, and and that's normally what I do. So uh, so in, in case you know, because we had some people ask like, where am I getting these questions? They're all in the chat. So hope that helps. All right, Tanter, I'm trying to get into HR, but my background is in healthcare. How can I prove my worth? I know I could take an admin job. I don't want you to take an admin job. And I, uh, I know it's hard to take a pay cut. I'm going to give you the same advice I just gave to uh, Fareed is I would go and I would do that sequence. I would go how to find your gift, uh, look at um, how to choose the right job. Be, believe me, there's it, there's a real prescription in the how to f- choose the right job. Look at you science perhaps. And then even if you don't want to use you science, but you know you want to get into HR, Actually, I, I might go through the youth science thing anyway, just to confirm. And then I would I would look at those career changer videos because that's got the formula in it for you. And those career changer videos are are quick. They're hit. They're quick hits, and uh, and they're they're powerful. Steve, how are you? How you been? Happy Thursday to you, Anita. Thank you. You're welcome for whatever I did. You got my dream job. Awesome. Medical staff manager. Fantastic there young lady okay however while under pressure i caved and gave a range 75 to 80k interview went great should i continue negotiating after i receive the offer so it sounds to me if i read this correctly that you 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 gave them a range probably either up front or down the road you know after the interview and then they said because you said i got my dream job so I'm assuming that an offer is imminent. If the offer is imminent, and assuming that it is, so cross my fingers and I hope all goes well, and for anybody, and and what Anita is referring to by she caved is I have videos out there about salary negotiation, and one of the key points in salary negotiation is never to give them a number. Always defer it, tell them you're open, when they're ready and they want to give you an offer and they say okay now we're down to the offer stage what do you want you still should have them pitch the offer to you you catch the offer they pitch it to you if you pitch the number like she did now you've given them a range and what's going to happen is if now first off she might have undercut herself she might have overstated it it's not knowing uh, she doesn't know what the benefits look like, what the price tags are, how much vacation bonus. She doesn't know the enti- all the components to the package. That actually is a good thing for you now, Anita, because if you've given them the 75 to 80K, when you look at the whole package, when you look at everything that comes with it, that is your opportunity to make a counter offer because now you have much more information than you had before. So what you can say is, well, I gave you the range of 75 to 80, and that is pretty you know, close to where I'd like to be, but now that I've had a chance to look through the details of the offer, and I understand, I mean, what can go into this, right? You got bonuses, we don't know how they're paid, quarterly, annually, semi-annually, uh, based on your performance, company performance, or whatever, you you've got other things, 401k matches. You could have profit sharing or phantom stock distributions, all that good stuff. You, you you've got vacation days. You've got dollars allocated for training. You've got all kinds of other uh, expenses that are allocated to you. Who knows your cell phone, this and that. I mean, whatever. There's a ton of stuff. So you look at it all and then make your counter. So the simple answer to your question is, yes, you should continue negotiating. The one thing that I do want you to do is as soon as you get the offer, I want you to plant the seed that you are going to come back 
with a counteroffer. And my favorite expression for that one is, you know, is there any wiggle room? And you need to be able to make sure that you plant that in their mind so that they don't assume you are agreeing to the offer. By the way, this happens a lot. Somebody gives you an offer, you don't say anything. Even if you want to think about it and come back and make a counteroffer, if you don't plant the seed that you are coming back with a counteroffer, a lot of employers assume that silence is compliance and that you are happy with it. So what I always like to do is almost no matter what, and I say almost no matter what, because if they absolutely, absolutely destroy your number and they totally blow you away to the point where it would be insulting for you to ask for more money, then you might want to think about it. But I always like to, to plant the seed, is there any wiggle room? And then every time you ask a question, you need to be prepared for every single response. I'm not going to go through the whole dichotomy and, 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 and flow chart of all the different responses they can give you. I just want you to make sure that you plant some seeds in, in right at that moment that you receive it, whether that's on the phone or whether that's in person. And when I say receive it, I'm not talking about email. I don't want you to email back to them, is there any wiggle room? When you actually speak to somebody, just mention, is there any wiggle room? I'd like to look this through, but I want to understand if this is, you know, massageable, basically. So, yes, the short, that's the short answer. The long answer is what I gave you. Hope that helps. Great question, Adam L. Hey, to you. It's okay, buddy. Whenever you come, you come. William Collins, buddy. I want to say thank you for that entirely overly generous remark. Um, by the way, uh, I was recommending to Farid and to um, to Tonter about how to find your gift. And I believe, William, if I may, I hope this isn't embarrassing you because it's out there on the site. He says the best video on the internet. So I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's uh, it, it was pretty damn fun. We did it in a live show, and then I clipped it out for you to a shorter version. But uh, I, I really hope you all take that in. You know, throw it on in the car or whatever. It's uh, it's 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 it's, it's pretty good. It's a good thinker. So, but William, great to have you, and um, you know, just gr great to have you on the channel and in the community. Sarah, how you doing? Hope to see you tomorrow too. Steve G. Steve G. Tina T, is it possible to delay an offer if I'm trying to hold out for a potential offer from another company? Tina, anything's possible. So let me give you, this is a, this is a great question, by the way. Um, I want to answer Tina's question, then I want to do some re-announcements for the new, the new players. Uh, to Tina and everybody else, managing multiple offers is a delicate situation, obviously, we all want to make sure that we are choosing the one that's best for us. Now, I always say, I want you, the ultimate victory for you and anything that I want to help you with is finding the job you want. And is your, is your, I know a number of you, I know this happens because I get emails or I get comments on the YouTube channel every day about this. Hey, I've got multiple interviews going. Uh, the one I really want is lagging the one that I'm about to get the offer or that's moving ahead or whatever. I always believe, and, and this is proven out over all the organizations that I've worked with, the job candidates that we have handled as part of our recruitment firm. So I run a recruitment firm, Milewalk. We have job candidates. Some of those job candidates are in situations like you where, where they're interviewing with our client and they're interviewing with other people. So what I always tell everybody, my clients, them, everybody involved, Always communicate where you are with what situation. So if this was me, I would say to the company that is behind, okay, hey, I am about to get an offer from another company, but I really like your company because that's true. I am only sharing this because I want, I want to make sure that I don't miss out on the opportunity to continue with you. Do you have any update as far as what the timing would be for the, you know, for the rest of the process should it go well? Are there other candidates? About how long do you, I'm just trying to get an idea because I would like to be respectful to the other company who is about to give me an offer and I want to let them know that I still am interviewing with you. Okay, you go to the other company, the company that's about to give you the offer, and you want to make sure that they recognize that you are receptive to the offer, you want the offer. Okay, because you want to see it. 
You don't want to delay the offer. So you, you, what you want is you want the offer, but you don't want to, you want to delay your response to them. That's what you want to do. So you, you let the company who's about to give you an offer, um, hang on, I just want to make sure I'm not hanging here. Hey, Kara, is everything okay? I'm, uh, I, I think I'm going to have to refresh my screen and I think I'm going to lose the chat because um, my, my screen is stuck. Shoot. Hang on, folks. I just, I'm, I don't want to lose the, uh, I don't know if anybody else is having, having trouble. Okay. Um, Kara, can you slack me? Are you having trouble? Okay, you have to refresh. All right, so listen, I'm going to have to refresh. I'm going to have to refresh. And I'm at, um, I'm at, I'm at Tina T at 10:43. Okay, so you're gonna, you'll have to feed me the chat if I lose it. Okay, all right, folks, hang on a second. And sorry, Tina. Okay, uh, I lost it, and I I already did that. I have Sam at 11:16. So you got to give me between Tina and Sam. Okay, so Tina, so so continue, continuing on, um, when you got the, co the company that's leading, you just want to say to them, I'm receptive to the offer and I, I've, I've communicated with the other company that I'm interviewing with. I want to, you know, I, I would like to finish out with them, uh, but I, I really would like to work through this with you because I'm very fond of, of the opportunity to work with you. Um, can you work with me on the timing? Now, the, their answer to that is going to be dependent on many, many things of which you do not have any control over other than how much they love you, okay? So, so when they, if they love you, they're going to want to wait it out. But you need to be reasonable too. You need to respect their time. So you got to go to them, see what they say. Then you need to go back to the other company and you got to communicate with them, hey, I've communicated with this other company. I've let them know I want to finish out with you. Here's what they told me, or I need to make a, a response by, or whatever it is. And you just got to be up front and you got to go back and forth. The absolute worst scenario, and this is not a awful scenario, it's just the worst case, is you get the offer. They don't want to wait for you. You accept it. Okay, then you make sure you give them some notice before you go there and you keep going and you just try to finish out with the other one. I know that's not a great situation, but they forced your hand and you don't want to look over your shoulder because if you if you go into that other company and you quit that interview when you could have finished it out and possibly gotten your dream job, you're going to be bummed and you're going to you're going to regret it. And I would rather you have a little egg on your face and you live with that than you regret the fact that you would have liked to work for that other com uh, company and feel like you made a bad choice. So I hope that all made sense. Sorry about the refresh. I don't know what the deal was there, but uh, and we're getting your we're getting your chats back. So I'm gonna wait. Kara is is feverishly giving me. Uh, let's see, 10:47. I f. Is that Issa or Issa? I don't know how you pronounce your name. You should let me know that. I see you have been very kind to me on LinkedIn and YouTube. So thank you. And I'm glad you like the catalog. Folks, I notice all this stuff. I read all my comments. Uh, and I appreciate I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, IF, when doing a boss hunt on LinkedIn, what do I say? And do I ask for a connection? So go and watch the boss hunting video. I give you the exact templates of what to, to say in the message. Do not ask for a connection. So I, as a matter of uh, practice, I do not favor sending somebody on LinkedIn a connection request when you do not know them and need something from them. So I'm an open, okay, so I'm an open networker. It says, you are welcome to connect with me on my LinkedIn profile. If you send me a connection request, I would prefer that you say, hey, Andy, Andy, I'm watching your videos. I really like them. They're helping me. Would you mind connecting? No. Boop. Connect. We're all good. Okay. There's some context. Or I saw something you posted on LinkedIn. I love that quote card. I, you're, you really inspire me. Would you like to connect? Sure. No problem. Then I get a bunch of blind ones. 
The blind ones that I get generally means within a day, a half a day, an hour, or a minute, I'm going to get a sales pitch. And then I kick them back and I say, that's rude, don't do that. Okay, so what I don't recommend for job seekers is just blindly trying to connect with people, whether it's a boss, potential boss, or whether it's somebody in the organization that you're trying to network with, or whether it's with an HR person or a recruiter or whatever. You, it, there's nothing wrong with a little foreplay, right? So like get out there to them. Hey, what, whatever it is, I admired your background. I would love to get connected online with you because... I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of my job search. I'm trying to, 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 to develop connections with, with like-minded people in the, you know, in the community, in the industry, in, in organizations like yours or whatever. Would you be open to connect? Do not send them the request. Send them a message. I don't care if you email them directly. You send them a LinkedIn in mail or whatever you do. But I just, I, I, I think it's worth the two steps. I think it's worth the two steps. So that's what I would suggest on that one, on that one. And that goes for anybody. And then Lorena, for the last one, I used your template. And I've applied for a job at a company that checks all the boxes. Great. They have an ATS, but I decided to also send my resume via email to the HR. No, you didn't ruin your chances at all. Uh, I, I don't have, l listen, I don't have a problem with you guys putting your resume in an applicant tracking system. I want you to know the statistics that even if you are wholly qualified, 97% of those resumes, actually 96 to 98%, depending on your level, actually in some it's 99, don't get seen by a human, even if you're qualified. We have way too many case studies in the in the boot camp where people will put their resume in the applicant tracking system, you might go into a coach and call like, stop that, don't do that, go, you're gonna have to target somebody. Then they'll, then they'll immediately uh, contact somebody and then the, the HR person, the recruiter, the whoever says, hey, this is great. You should come in for an interview. Sure, because no one saw the, the resume. They got an automated bong letter within five minutes or an hour. And so so it's not ruining your chances. I don't have any problem with you going two routes. I favor going direct and emailing to somebody and giving them a chance at least a few days to look at it. I like a week but that's okay. If you send it to the HR person and you put it in the applicant tracking system, that's okay. That's totally okay. No problem. No problem. And if somebody, the recruiter sees it or whoever's looking at, there could be a so there could be many people looking at the applicant tracking system submissions. Some companies have a screener. That person's sole job is to look at resumes. That's it. That's all they do. And maybe they maybe they send emails on behalf of a busy recruiter outbound. Maybe, okay. Then you got a recruiter. Some companies might have the recruiter screening the applicant tracking system and be the screener and the recruiter all in one. That's fine. You got other companies where they've got just an HR person, no recruiter. Maybe that HR person. We got a client right now that we work with, the VP of operations. She's got a VP title. She runs all apps in all back office and admin functions like accounting, HR, recruitment, and so on. She has no recruiter, none, zero. Just got like an HR person, it's a 100 person company. So, you know, every company's a little different and you don't know, I mean, unless you're doing good detective work to see, is there a recruiter there? Does it look like there's somebody I can send that directly to? And so on. And it's easy to get email addresses, very easy. And if you're in the boot camp, I'm gonna show you how to do that in June. Actually, it's already in the boot camp because it's in, in session three. But um, all right, hope that hope that helps. So no. And then IF again, what do I do if someone at my targeted company has looked at my LinkedIn profile? You do nothing. You do nothing. Uh, don't. One thing I would tell all of you that I would stop doing. I know, I know, I know you're not going to listen to me, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's going to make me feel better. It makes no difference who looks at your LinkedIn profile. You don't know what they looked at it for. You don't know if they liked it, didn't like it, care, don't care. Uh, we're in the middle of something. I gave an example. We were uh, talking on one of my monthly coaching sessions about how uh, we're doing a search. And in like one afternoon, I looked at 800 profiles on LinkedIn. Open, shut, open, shut, open, shut, open, shut. Because I was looking for something really specific. Does that mean because I looked at your profile there's nothing wrong with you. You just didn't fit what I was looking for. So that is nothing. Or maybe I got 
a call. Maybe I got something, I got sidetracked, and I have to go back to my 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 schematic and my my run through, my research. There's I would not be spending any time and I would never email somebody and say, I saw you looked at my LinkedIn profile. May, are you are you interested? Hey, I'm doing this and that. It 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 it's it's a little it's a little it's not it's not good. It's not good. No good could come of that from that. So don't do anything. Don't do anything. All right. Wait, one other thing. I want to I run back because I know not. Okay, it's 11.45. We can keep going. Uh, I got my little list here of stuff I want to tell you. Boot camp tomorrow covering salary. And uh, in, in June, we've got uh, another coaching session. There are a couple of hours each. We're going through uh, finding finding people and email addressing, but you get the whole boot camp. You get all the modules immediately when you jump in. And then in July, there's three sessions and two in August, and we run those right in a row. Uh, I think somebody asked a question about what's the difference between this session and the boot camp. The one thing that you have to know about the boot camp, and I would check out the boot camp page, is it is a highly structured, like A to Z, framework of everything that you need to do in the order in which you need to do it in order to identify and secure your dream job. It's There's a structure, there's strategy to it, there's a framework, there's a system, meaning it's packaged. It says, do this first, I teach it, here's all the assets. Do this next, I teach it, here's all the assets, and so on. It goes through self-discovery, it goes through marketing yourself and all the assets that you need with the resume, the cover letters, the LinkedIn profile, and so on. It it teaches you how to search, meaning bringing yourself to the market in a proactive way to target the places that you wanna go and get to where you wanna go, not in a react reactionary mode, but literally targeting yourself. It's all the networking, it's all the networking templates, it's all that stuff. It's interviewing, it's all the salary stuff, and then there's some niche things like how to evaluate small companies, how to make sure that you know how to, you know, tee up um, your, you know, uh, a return to the workforce. How, I mean, there's a number of other things that are very, very specialized. The level of detail that is in the boot camp is so far beyond anything that I put on the public site. That's what you pay for. So, so there's that. The other thing about the boot camp that this format does not give you is the boot campers have an excessive number of private live coaching with me and and whenever they have a question, they can just go put it in the system and I answer it for them. So there is a community inside that is communicating and getting my responses. You're basically having it at your fingertips. There's no way I could do that for the, the, the hundreds of thousands and millions of people that see my stuff free. I do this as a public service, uh, uh, to the community because I love engaging and you all make me a better coach. But at the end of the day, there's only so much I can give away for free. So the level, and I, I actually, a couple of weeks ago, I even put up an email uh, when we were going right into kind of a long stretch of boot camp coaching sessions every week for like four or five weeks about one of the individuals, David, who said he was a little reluctant because he'd watched 80 videos of mine on YouTube. He said, and then I was a little hesitant, but I got in the boot camp and I can't believe how much deeper, and, and it's the organization. People pay for the organization, they pay for the depth and the system and the framework, and they pay for the access. That's a big deal. And you also get the Career Accelerator program and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. And you get lifetime coaching in the boot camp, meaning you can keep coming back as long as you want. There's like. 24 live sessions so it's like 50 hours of live coaching a year so it's 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 different it's 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 deeper it's and there's a lot more stuff in it um so whoever asked that question all right let me go back i want to um you got the calendar you got the catalog uh and uh let me let me just keep going with your questions for now Kara, can you can you hit the chat again with the links all right, Mr. Mobius, I think that's where I was. Mr. Mobius, my contact sent my resume to the division head, but an offer was already extended. Okay, watching for two months, but no new openings posted. My contact shared their name. Should I reach out to the boss directly? Yes. So, everybody, 
we in our lives have never had an experience that we were not at the absolute center of okay so we walk around in this world and i don't know what it's like to be any of you i can be empathetic i can process the world as best i can and project but i've always experienced this world as me mr mobius you're always experiencing this world as you and what often happens is when we go through whatever the experience is and in your case one transaction where you sent the resume the offer was extended you didn't hear back and so on and you assume everything's done but what you don't know what's happening in that world is is that person working out are they considering hiring somebody else what else could be going on there's a video that i have out there about how to get the job after being rejected there are several dozen people who have sent me emails that have said i used that technique and got a job at that company using that exact technique that you gave it was either i got the job i interviewed for or i got a different job at the company that not the one i was interviewing for that's the people who've actually let me know this so I want to give you the same advice that although you didn't get rejected, you just didn't get a swing at the plate. So what I would do is I would say, I would actually send that person an email and say, hey, here's what I would have done. At that moment when they extended the offer and I knew that my friend or my contact walked, in, walked my resume to a hiring official and they did not reach out to me because they hired somebody, which is totally fine. I would have emailed that person and said, I'm so bummed out, I really would have loved to, based on what my friend told me, based on my research, based on my whatever, I really would have loved to have worked with you. I would love just to you know, make this connection. I wanted to send you this message. I want to let you know I'm interested. And if anything else changes, will you please let me know? Then I would have said, by the way, I would love to also take this as an opportunity to just develop a connection with you, is there any, you know, you can see I'm in the middle of my job search. Is there anybody else that you know, either inside your organization or outside your organization that could use my services? And would you mind connecting on LinkedIn and so on? And I would use that as a networking opportunity. That's what I would have done. I never, I always want you guys thinking every transaction, every communication, every interaction, it doesn't matter who the interaction's with. It doesn't matter who the company is. It doesn't matter who the person inside the company is. That person is now an asset for you they're not a gatekeeper they're not an obstacle they're not a, they're an asset how do you make them an asset if they say no what can you do to turn them into an asset a networking asset a whatever asset be kind go out with class, whatever but never never give up never give up and the more that you think that way as you head into every interaction you will always be looking at oh i wish i had the card handy i had we i think we talked about this last week or the week, maybe it was last week, in the boot camp sessions about every interaction that you go into, every email that you go into, everything that you do, everything that you say, everything that you do. What can I do to get a positive outcome out of this, no matter how it turns out? What can I do positively? What can happen positively? How can I turn it into a positive? So in your case, you had a golden opportunity to gain an asset there it's not over you can go back and you can just do give them little uh, i said this at 1150 whatever to 1153 go back rewind this and and t take my language and send that to the to that to that hiring official for sure don't don't take no for an answer okay if there's silence you can't do anything but if there's a response you can and that's what i would do and it's been two months now and, and now you're gonna have to refresh his or her memory about that. But always be thinking that way. All right, Letitia, Letitia C. God, we're not even to 11 o'clock yet. Uh, all right, I had an interview scheduled this week and the interviewer didn't call. Uh, had an interview scheduled. Do I even bother contacting this thing? Never, that is just horseshit. Um, Letitia, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you two things. I'm going to give you my opinion, which is they're not worthy of you if that's how they behave. That's nuts. Wait, life happens. Anything could have happened. If I have an interview with somebody and I'm not dead, as but somebody in my family died or whatever, 
I would have gotten to somebody to communicate to you that we have to reschedule this. So I don't care what is going on. Somebody from that company should know to contact you. That's the first thing. And I don't care if that was like three hours ago. So anytime this week. The second thing that I would do is I would contact whoever your quarterback is. So whether that's the HR person, the recruiter, or if it's a small company, maybe it's a hiring official or whatever, that's what I would that's what I would do. I you know, it's up to you how you feel about it, but the one thing that I would do is I would remember that this was your your interaction with them. I don't know if this is your first interaction with them, that's really saying something. So, but no, I mean it you know, when you ask, do I even bother? I would, I would contact them and I would say, you know, I'm going to give you a chance to explain this, but I'm not going to forget it, right? I'm not going to tell them that, but I'm, that's what would be going through my head. I, I'm with you. I, I totally agree. Oh, I'm just now seeing the, the other thing about, I, I don't, listen, you know, right? People crucify candidates for making a mistake in an interview. This is not only a mistake, it's bad form and bad etiquette, and that's even worse, in my opinion. All right. B. Mars. Have freelance bookkeeper for many years. How do I present my professional experience chronologically? Uh, I'm not... Uh, if you've been a freelancer, what are the... Um, I'm trying to think if I have... Hey, Carrie, you know what? For uh, B. Mars... Can you get her the um, the video link on um, contractor? I have a video out there, folks, and B Mars, you should check this out. Uh, how to go from contractor slash self-employed to full-time employee, and that's your that's your answer. But uh, we do. I have a specialty section in the boot camp for all the. Um, unique situations like returning to the workforce, employment gaps, contractors and self-employed people and freelancers trying to get full-time positions, how you lay your resume out for all of these conditions. Uh, I don't uh, know. I'm trying to think if I have um, one other thing that you might want to check out. I have 30 common resume questions. I have a video. It's one hour. And I think one of them might be this uh, situation, but you, you ultimately just want to put B Mars Inc. or B Mars Sole Proprietorship. You want to have a little summary. Served as a freelance bookkeeper uh, for you know small to medium sized businesses performing, you know, and then list some specific functions. Then what you do is you know company ABC or or large manufacturer, whatever you want to put. You could put the name of the company out there and then you know what it is that you did then you could put the years and then the next one and so on you don't have to list every single project what you could do depending on how many years that you've been doing this you said many many could be five many could be 25 you could have a supplemental document that you don't necessarily circulate until you until they request it but you could ask them if they want it that lists all your projects but on your resume i would keep it reasonable but i would just I would just list them, whatever they are. But I would check that. Kirsty B for boot camp. I sent a boss hunter email to a company that we're advertising. Okay, so you knew there was a position. A few days later, a recruiter called me to put me forward. Awesome. I'm assuming. Um, so Kirsty, uh, a few days later, the recruiter called me. Okay, they want to put me forward again. Hey, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not following this. Uh, you sent the boss hunting email to a company. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. Kirsty. Just think. Okay, wait. So you're in the boot camp, and I don't know if you're going to be with me tomorrow. Um, I know it's late your time. Uh, but if, I, if I'm not getting this exactly how you need it, go into the boot, go into the boot camp and then put it in the question. Ask me the question, and then I'll respond right away. But I think I got what you're asking. So, Kirsty sent, this is an interesting situation, and actually not one that I think I've addressed ever publicly. So, what she did was she sent a, an email directly to a hiring official 
or who she thinks is a hiring official. A few days later, an outside recruiter, a third party or an executive search firm called her and said, hey, I want to put you in this company where she had sent the email. Now, Kirsty, what you didn't tell me is did the uh, hunted boss respond to you and did he forward your information to the recruiting people or to the HR people or whoever's in charge of this? And the only reason that this stuff is important is because there are what's called stimulation of interest clauses in contracts that third-party recruitment firms have with companies. And so like, for example, with, with Milewalk, we're a search firm. We have contracts with companies. In our contract, it says, if we present somebody to you, no matter who they are, they are ours. I don't care what they did. I don't care if they submitted their resume to you. I don't care if they called you a hundred times. I don't care, whatever. If we're bringing them to you, we have recruited them and we were the stimulators of interest. Therefore, the person is ours. Most recruitment firms don't have that clause. They have a clause that says, hey, if, if, if we found the person first or the person found us, so the stimulation of interest was their applicant tracking system or an inside employee or whoever, then the recruitment firm might not be given credit, in which case the recruitment firm would not want to bother spending their time with you if they're not going to get paid. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to know, did the boss respond to you and what did the boss do with your stuff? The boss might not have ever seen your email or opened it could have ignored it, deleted it, could have forwarded it to HR, maybe not. Who knows? What I would say is here's how I would handle it. I'd go to the recruiter and say, listen, I didn't know you were going to call me. Otherwise, I'd have just waited because you are better off going through the recruitment firm, just so you know, because you're going to get help from the recruiter. So I would go to the recruiter. I would tell the recruiter, um, I don't know if it's a he or she, exactly what you did and say, I, I sent this to them. Now, I'm happy to give you my resume and you can submit me because I haven't gotten a response. If you haven't gotten a response, I would make sure that the recruiter knows this so that if the recruiter submits you and somebody says to her, well, this, you know, Kirsty sent, you know, our, our guy or gal a, a, this beautiful email that was, you know, we were going to call her. Now, that's kind of crappy because they didn't call you yet and the recruiter got to them first. But that's a touchy situation. I, it is me. I go to the recruiter, tell the recruiter what I did, get, let the recruiter take you forward, and the recruiter will hash it out with them. You're not going to get penalized. I just don't want you to, I don't want the recruiter to be embarrassed because the recruiter is your best asset right now because the recruiter knows the company and should be able to coach you, prep you, handle you, and so on. That's what I would do. I think I got that right. All right. Pete Olson, what qualities are employers interested in when hiring a manager leader with no previous paid managerial experience. Pete, uh, every company's a little different. And I will tell you this. So when I'm hiring someone to lead someone, you do not need, okay, just because somebody has years of managerial experience does not mean that they're a great manager or a great leader. So I look for different types of leadership qualities, but most the qualities that I look for are, you know, does the leader build more leaders? Does the leader inspire people to be their best? So I would be looking at you, asking you to tell me how you have motivated people in the past. I could get a sense from communicating with you if you're articulate, if you're energetic, if you're influential, and a lot of the other things that I would be looking for, I can actually pick up on that, okay? Through your direct communication with me. But what I would also want to know that you have a history of is getting people to rise to the occasion. And so now, just because you don't manage them doesn't mean you don't get them to rise. I once had a position where I was a senior staff consultant. And it was my job to optimize an entire unit 
in what is now British Petroleum, but it was Amoco back then, about getting a like 40 person uh, unit that purchased all the material internationally for Amoco and set up all the contracts with all the stuff that they bought to set up gas stations and stop and shops and car washes and all stuff. And I had to get them to completely change what they did, the way they did it, and so on. Now, they, I was not managing them. I was guiding and consulting and then drawing up the strategy and the implementation and so forth. If they were able to take that and go and alter it and it led to optimization, more profit, that's leadership too. And that's influence. And those kind of, those kind of stories need to be told. So if you are you know, working with customers, whether internal, external, or peers or others, those are the kind of stories I would be packaging up. The other thing I would do sort of to be funny and sort of not, is I have a leadership mentoring program that you should be in. And that is, um, we've already gone over the programs like three, four months old. We've gone through building confidence. We've gone through focus. We've gone through decision making and how to set the right goals where you're making the right decision where something takes years to do. And then coming up in a few weeks is on building trust. It's pretty cool. And the building trust isn't about silly stuff like, you know, do what you say you're going to do, follow through, always be on time. That's crap and nonsense. And everybody knows that. But how uh, does your internal congruence and the way that you approach the world and how you think and process and all that good stuff, how does that affect your ability and your, your congruence affect your ability to build trust externally? Because it all starts this way. So that's what that session is going to be about. I mean, it's pretty cheap. And if you jump in, you get the past stuff too and the career accelerator. So that's something to consider. It's pretty cheap. It really, I mean, the value's high. All right. Daniel Mahayas? Mahayas? Hi, Andrew. Last Friday had third round interviews. They said they wanted to continue discussions with me, asked me for three references. Awesome. And I am now waiting. Okay, what is the likelihood they are going to make me an offer? I have no idea. I, I literally have no idea because I, I'm assuming that asking for references is a good indication. However, I would have asked when they asked for the references why, why they were asking. So obviously, I know this is a natural course of an interview process and a lot of companies check references. Does this mean an offer is imminent? I would have asked. So if I got an offer, what would the maximum time to start the new job is acceptable? Is one month too much? One month is not too much. However, there are a number of factors that go into that. As a statistic, the f okay, the further away your signature date is from your start date, the further away this is, the less likely you show up. And it doesn't mean it was your fault. The company can bail out on you, find somebody else. You might have a change of heart, something goes wrong. And if I got to wait 30 days to start, there's a whole lot of bad stuff that can happen between this date and this date. Okay, that's okay. Now, you also have to factor in that you want to resign. You want to give a two-week notice. That's generally customary. And then you probably want a couple days to clear up this nugget up here, okay? So if you said to me, well, it's Thursday, May 30th, and I want to start on June 30th, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign today. Now, what I would say is you sign today, you resign tomorrow, and you give them the two weeks, and then you got a two-week gap. That's not the end of the world. I would try to shrink it to three, but you know, if it's, let's say, Monday or Tuesday, and you don't want to resign till Friday. You want to get your things in order. You want to make sure you got your files cop. You know, everything's moved off. You want to get your resignation letter. You got to do all your stuff. Sometimes there's a background check. You know, all that stuff can, can occur. And for very senior positions, sometimes you can't just dash out in two weeks. So there's a lot that goes along with it. And since I don't know all that, my answer to your question is one month is not too much. Uh, if I'm the, you know, and depending on, when the date is some companies delay start dates because some are like you know smallish publicly traded companies and to put a senior exec on the bill uh you know when i could wait till the first of a new quarter and so on matters sometimes it doesn't all kinds of stuff comes into play 
All right. Let me see. How we doing? 1209. All right. I got to... I, <laughs> I don't know how many more questions there are, but I think I got a whole bunch here in this Slack thing. Um, all right. Lorena... Budno? Budno? Does the applicant tracking system show all the versions of the resume I've updated or just the last one? I I've might have submitted one with a couple of mistakes. Uh, Lorena, I, I don't know. Um, some uh, uh, applicant tracking systems, uh, ours, for example, when we import your resume, it retains all the other ones. And then we have this little thing that says, boom, this is her primary resume now. And there's a little red thing with a check mark. So I think everyone's different. I would not worry about that. You got a new resume you want to submit? Just go ahead and submit it. Joseph, I'm being considered for a consultant position at a company where I wasn't hired as a permanent employee previously. How can I sell myself during my contract to make them consider me permanently? So one of the things that I highly recommend, and for any of you that are considering this like Joseph, or meaning um, that you are in a position where you are either starting a new job, about to start a new job, uh, are, are a contractor that is looking to try to transition from a contract to a permanent employee or, or temp to perm they call it or whatever of that nature, I just got done mentioning my Leadership Monthly Live program, which is great for everybody. But when you join that Leadership Monthly Live, you get my five-module career accelerator program. The reason I mentioned that's a $400 program that you get, and you can jump in for $49, bucks and then you can watch the program. The, the first module is on your first 90 days, and how, the 12 things you need to do starting on day one and then continue for the three months. And for you, Joseph, one of the things that I would do that's part of those 12 steps is whether you're a full-timer, by the way, this is whether you're a full-timer or whether you're a contractor looking to convert, you have got to have clarity on what the success metrics look like. That's for anybody, but it's especially important for you to say, okay, the contract's set for, you know, I don't know, 90 days, could be could be 180 days, uh, could be 270, could be could be could be a whole year. What, you know, I'm interested in working at this organization full time. I interviewed for a full time position. That's okay, but I love it so much. I want to take this contract. Could you give me an idea of what I need to accomplish for you to consider me for full time? You know, what will I have need what will I need to do? And then I would treat your stay there just like you were an employee. Literally, I would get to build the relationships with people, I would also, as a matter of balancing your portfolio, go meet people in other departments. Make sure that you are getting to know as many people in the organization as possible. Start building relationships with other people in the company if that's possible. I don't know what the size of the company is, but I mean, and it could be any, you know, it could be any size that they hire, I mean, small hire contractors, large hire contractors. So I would start to diversify myself just from a relationship standpoint because if there are other opportunities within the organization when your contract ends, you might be able to move into another into another unit. The other thing that I would do is I probably would not stop interviewing. And I would I would interview while I was a contractor as best you can. I know you need to dedicate yourself to doing a good job at that company, but there's no guarantee that, and I don't know how long the contract is. So if if you do end up getting a full-time position, I would go back to the company and say, hey, I want to work here. Uh, I got this opportunity for full-time with, you know, in a good company. It's got benefits and all that good stuff. You know, is there an opportunity for you to convert me? Do that. You've got leverage. That's what I would do. And I would get in my, I would get in my leadership program and grab that career accelerator. All right, Caroline, or Carolyn, I should say. Blue collar, you're a welder. Do you have any advice? I do. Resume samples for us folks. So, Car Carolyn, you could use the same resume. Uh, you might, uh, I don't know if you have, uh, if you do have a college degree. If not, that's okay. Maybe you have an associate's degree. If, if you have a high school diploma, that's fine too. Uh, maybe you don't, Maybe you don't have a huge highlights section, but you could you could talk about the career profile. You can, I mean, I, did, we, I had a buddy, he's a welder, lives in Florida, is a super high school buddy of mine. We did the same thing with his resume. He's got his little story at the top. 
Then he's got, you know, his his the places he's worked and just the professional experience. You could use the same template. If you don't want to overdo it and you don't want to go super elegant or have all those highlights or maybe, you know, maybe the educational section isn't, uh, you know, isn't as robust as somebody with multiple degrees, that's okay. You could still use the same template. I mean, it's not, you know, it's a matter of, of, of how much content is in there. All right. Mike Elliott. I've been, uh, yep, going through interview intervention and working with stories of field stories aren't that great. Okay, what's the question? I'm not, I'm not sure what the question is. So what, the stories aren't that great. I, I'm i not sure how to answer that. I really am not. I, you know, follow the storytelling principles. The stories will be good. They will. Adam Stark, Andy, big fan. How you doing, buddy? I appreciate all the effort you put into the community. Uh, in the resume profile, if you're a salesperson and uh, you refer to yourself as such, how should a career changer reserve to themselves if they want to do something they've not done before? Adam, you got to go to the, uh, the career changer playlist. And I talk about resumes, people, while they are a history of what you've done, they do not serve the purpose of encapsulating your history. The purpose of the resume is to get a job interview. That's all. That's all it does, okay? The best way to do that for a job interview for a position you want is to think forward, not backwards. So while you are a salesperson or whatever, whoever you, all of you, whatever you are, if you don't want to be that anymore, what is it? that are from a capabilities standpoint, those traits, those characteristics, those skills and other things that whatever the position is that you're moving toward, what are those and how do you highlight in your resume that you are that? And you can genericize the terms if you'd like, right? If you wanna be a marketer, you could use business development. If you are looking to change to something else where you wanna be more creative, You can use that nomenclature, but you want to accentuate how you have the skills and the capabilities that are required to do the future job, not what you did in the past. I I go into detail on this in in that career changer stuff. And as a matter of fact, that three-day live event that I was talking about, July 9th through 11th, uh, we are still finalizing the agenda of the the different uh, teaching portions of that. And we are toying with the career changer for that. So you might get some more stuff there too. I know it's a month out, but it's still, it's still will be there. Gail, how are you? Um, uh, hey, Andrew, I'm going for a final interview tomorrow. And how do I get to say I need to take some time before I would sign the contract? Gail, I would go back to what I shared. Ooh, who was it? Uh, I can't remember who that was, but, uh, but same kind of thing. Just want to be upfront. Do you have some other things going? Here's what I need. Here's the time I need, and so on. Brandon, do you have any examples of successful career changers that didn't have to sacrifice salary? Yes. As a matter of fact, a few weeks ago, we had a few boot campers in here and over 50-year-olds that changed careers after 50, didn't take a pay cut. Um, Seems impossible if you are the household breadwinner. I will say this about everybody anybody, whether it's uh, Brandon or anybody else. Your thinking is flawed. That's right. Your thinking is flawed when you are concerned about things you're going to have to do without, pay cuts you're going to have to take, people won't want to hire me, I'm too young, I'm too old, I don't have enough this, I don't have enough that. You guys got to stop that nonsense, okay? That is, those limitations are up here, all right? When you open yourself up and you have faith that you will be able to do it, you will figure out how you need to make that transition. So you didn't give me any insight on uh, what you were changing from to what you were changing to. There are several dozen people that I've worked with in the boot camp who thought the same thing and they wanted to go from sales to marketing they wanted to go from this to that they wanted some wanted to make slight pivots some wanted to totally change and get out of what they were doing to go somewhere else 
and it's 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 about looking at it the right way thinking about what you need moving forward you've got to sell yourself there are i have a dozen videos out there on what you need to do to build that brand there are ways that you can start right now working toward uh, getting yourself known as someone who has knowledge in that space don't think that your uh, your job history is the only place that you can have that expertise what about writing articles what about being involved in networking groups what about contributing to those markets in those communities what about volunteering what about all of that other stuff that you can do now it, I don't know what you're going from I don't know what you're going to I don't know how much you earn I don't know where you live. All these things contribute, but there are ways to open up those possibilities. You live in a small town? We had a guy who was an ops guy in rural, here's a guy, rural Pennsylvania. He was an ops guy for a small, this is Victor, brute camper, ops guy for a small company, decided there wasn't enough opportunities there, thought he was underpaid, went to Washington, D.C. We gave, we handed him the networking templates. We taught him how to drum up meetings in a different place. He goes there, stays with a friend, gets a CFO job at a credit union. That's changing careers. I mean, that like, and he got a 25% pay increase. So this is, this can be done. This can be done, but you got to get rid of that. I mean, I, this is tough love. I, I do love you. Everybody needs this. You need to know that when you use words like impossible, then it's going to be impossible. You don't use words like impossible and like I can instead of I shouldn't, I wouldn't, I couldn't, I whatever. You're going to get there. You're going to get there. I mean, we can go on. Actually, um, uh, Kelly. Well, I don't know if she's Kelly's here. Kelly did the trifecta, right? Over 50. Was out of, wait, no job, over 50. Change careers, pay increase. So it's, uh, it's, 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 it's there. It's there. Okay. <laughs> Oh, how am I doing? I'm going at 1230. So wait, for those of you guys still here, I'm going to try to jam in as many more of these as I can. All right, boot camps tomorrow. Um, I'm off until the 27th of June. Check the calendar. Meet me in San Francisco. Get the catalog. Get the catalog. Get the catalog. And don't miss the July 9th through 11th session. And, and, and Brandon, I'm sorry if that was hard, but you can, man. Come on. All right. Kathleen, I'm going to do my best. It's, you know what? My family is really jamming me up with stuff, but I'm going to do my best. Sanjitha, is that how you say it? How to inform potential employer that I can work remotely and travel rather than relocating. Just do it. Say, you know what? I am open. First thing is, employers become fairly flexible when you show them you got the goods. So here's what happens. I got a, if I got an employee, okay, I, I work, Kara and I, a little, tiny little mile walk, powerful little company. If I would prefer that you live in the Chicagoland area, if we work together, whether you're a contractor with me or whatever. If, if I'm going to hire you, if we've got, if you've got the goods and you live somewhere else, Instead of asking you to relocate, I would be okay with doing video calls and whatever. If you are really good, you're up to speed, you know the space, and it's worth it because you're that much better. But if I need to coach you up and train you and all that good stuff, I'm going to be more reluctant to let you be remote because I need you with me. So, you know, this kind of stuff, what I always say is when you go into the process, you don't want to start negotiating on the screening call. Uh, one of the things I can't, damn, I can't remember the, the, the video I did this, but I went, at, I talked at length about how in the screening process, you need to be more concerned about saying something that will screen you out than worrying about what the recruiter, sourcer, screener, or whoever is asking you. Tell me about a time when. How would you do this? Whatever. You're gonna, you'll be fine there in the screening process. Where most people lose out is because they say something like, well, I don't want to relocate or I don't want to travel or I don't want to this or that. Right? What you need to say is, I'm pretty flexible. You know, my preference would be to stay where I am because I'm rooted and I have family here or whatever. But I'm, I'm really open to doing whatever I can to make sure that we're successful. 
So if I need to relocate, we can consider that. If I'm, you know, maybe need to spend a couple days a week, you know, here for the first X months, I'm open to that. Working remotely, I'm open to that. I'm open to traveling wherever I need to be. And so you just you want to make them feel you're open. So you buy yourself time so you can evaluate the opportunity. You may love it so much that you might want to relocate. I don't know that you will. Maybe it's not um, a good thing for you. I don't know. But one thing I would not do is I would not eliminate possibilities in having discussions with companies because you think there's a hard and fast situation. We've had hiring officials say, this true story, many times over, I need you to hire me somebody in Chicago. We go, we start searching and searching. Can't find them. Find them. We can't convince them to come and talk to you. All right, let's go to Milwaukee. Let's go to Ohio. You know, go to Pennsylvania if you need to. You know what? Heck, we got this guy up in Canada, right? Like this stuff happens. And, and sometimes as time goes on, so things change. So even though people are dead set on something or companies are dead set on something, you never know. Just don't, don't knock yourself out. Don't knock yourself out of the process. All right, I'm still in the Slack thing. Uh, a, B, I'm thinking about quitting a $60,000 a year desk job out of, uh, I'm assuming you mean boredom, to a trade skill job, but worrying about regretting it. How to choose the right job. How to find your gift. Check those out. I would check the U Science thing. Tim Bissell, trying to decide what to do. Most important to me is my time. Awesome. Do I continue to search for a full-time position or contract myself uh, in the trades? Tim, the freedom, you know that freedom ain't free? That's really true. Uh, I have a lot of freedom and a ton of stress. I worked all weekend on Memorial Weekend from the 6.30 in the morning till the time my head hit the pillow. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I got freedom. I got a lot of freedom. So that's not a complaint, but these kind of things happen. So you have got to be ready. This is the reality of it. You gotta be like, I would rather work 24 hours a day for myself than one minute for somebody else. That's just me. So when you think about freedom Free, I have to wake up and generate money every day. I have to, you know what I mean? I have to pay people. I have to pay the mortgage. I have to do all those things. So there's something about a steady paycheck where the cost and the pain, you know, one outweighs the other, right? The steadiness and the safety are outweighed by your boredom. And then you move on. So I can't answer that for you. Uh, but I, I just, as a piece of advice, as somebody who's managed multiple successful businesses for the last 15 years, it, it, it takes a lot to, to get that freedom. It really, it really does. It really does. And you will, you will work a lot more and you will get paid a lot less until you stabilize it. So, you know, I don't know what your situation is. If you're footloose and fancy free and your expenses are low and you don't have a wife or kids or partner or whatever it is, then, you know, I'm all for you giving it a try. I just want you to do it with your eyes open. That's what I would say. Boy, some of these questions are tough to answer. I mean, like, all right, George, I left a company I disliked. Okay, and basically took time off for two years. Seems the market hates this kind of gap. It doesn't love it. It doesn't love it. George, uh, check my how to handle an employment gap video. Eric Lindbergh, when are we getting over to Sam? Hi, Andy, I had a disturbing experience at a phone screen. Third-party ex recruiter expressed biased against her. Oh, man. How should I let the company know of my concern of this? So, Eric, um, and just to be, I'm not, I'm not completely clear. Okay, so you had a disturbing phone screen. Was the phone screen with the third party recruiter, or was the phone screen with the company? Because you said the third party recruiter expressed bias against certain ethnic groups. Now, I don't know what if that's your ethnic group or other ethnic groups, and if. What I, if it's me, if it's, if it's me, so I'm a white male and that even is a discriminated group in some cases. Now I'm not, you know, crying poo poo or anything. I'm just saying we have clients that come to us that say, you need to hire me a woman or a minority or a this or that. Like we have all that stuff too. So, uh, if, if I'm being discriminated against, 
that's a different issue. Then you need to determine um, you know, how you want to handle that and if you want to pursue any action. If it's me and I'm interviewing with a company and I am not being discriminated against, I probably would discuss that with the company after I was hired. Uh, you know, go through the process and say, listen, as a piece of feedback, I want you to know that this recruiter is so on and so forth. Now, what you don't know, we've had situations where we had one woman client of our CEO that, that told me that she would not hire a certain ethnic group from us. And it was an ethnic group that we likely would have produced a candidate from. I can't control her. I can't make, she's the boss, right? She's our client. She, she can run her company how she wants to. This stuff is a reality. But my view of the world is that this world is a big place. And so I don't need to do work with her if she's going to behave that way. And we don't anymore, right? That's just, we just don't. And if we're working with companies who are behaving that way where they are discriminating against people, that from a set of values perspective doesn't, doesn't jive with me. Okay, that's not, my, that's not my thing. But I don't know your personal situation. I don't know how badly you need this job. I know there's an other factors that go into this. But in some way, shape, or form, I would probably communicate this. But I would try to figure out when the right time to do that is. So, And I also don't know if it was, you know, the recruiter is telling you that the company has biases or the recruiter has biases. So I'm not even sure what the entire situation is. I don't like that situation. I mean, I just, I think it's awful. Um, that's nothing to do with you. I'm just saying I think it's an unfortunate situation. All right, Julie M. Hi, Andy. Once an offer has been extended to you, how do you negotiate a higher salary with a company that has zero bonus structure? So Julie, same way I would negotiate anything and what I want to do for you is I want you to check out, I want you to head to my YouTube channel. I want you to type salary in the search bar. And there are a number of salary videos. I have a salary playlist as well if you want to look at the playlists. And I would check those out. And I give you the, all the how-tos there. And sorry, I'm, I'm scooting along, folks. I got, a, I got another meeting I got to run to. Beach girl goodness you guys are filled um okay wait let me i'm trying to get a few of these boot camp questions in. so somebody's asking um is oh yeah listen okay on the boot camp stuff here's how the boot camp works when you get in the boot camp which it's really good i mean it's we have so many i i almost you know it, it's good. It's deep. When you get in there, I um, everything is recorded. Everything is available. I don't like wait to give you stuff. I hate when people do that. You get it all. You want to go watch it all in one day? Go ahead, buckle up, and go ahead and do that. There is a comments section in there. Anytime you have a question, you just go in and you ask me. It doesn't matter where I am in the world. Every day, I set time aside to go and answer the questions. So, you know, if it's Tuesday and you got a question, you ask me. And every day I answer questions on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. It doesn't matter if I'm in California or Europe or Mexico or wherever. It makes no difference. So uh, Kara supports it. I support it. Uh, System-related stuff. She handles all the content-related stuff. What do I do when? I handle and I answer stuff every day. It makes no difference where I am in the world because I'm here to support you. Then we have these stretches where we have live sessions, usually at the end of the week. We've been doing them on Fridays now. And so we're wrapping up like a four or five week in a row run of questions where you can come. So like anybody who signs up today can come tomorrow and spend two hours with me. And then in June, we have another session, a singular session. And then in, Jan in July and August, we have five weeks in a row of, um, of sessions. So four times a year, there's a cluster like that. And those are awesome for asking us questions. We've recently re reshaped the format, but you don't need to worry. I'm, I'm, you should see what I do to answer the question. I mean, I get in there. You will have love and support, and you don't need to worry about that. So anybody who was wondering, I think there was a question or two on that. Um, let's see. Beach Girl, how important is LinkedIn? So I think LinkedIn is, I'm going to give you the straight and skinny on LinkedIn. It is by far the absolute worst social media platform as far as function 
goes. It is very important, notwithstanding, for professionals, pros, bis white collar folks. If you are in the trades, it's much less important that you be there. If you are a white collar professional, you should have a LinkedIn profile. Our statistics over 15 years shows that if you are a white collar professional and you have a LinkedIn profile, you have an 8% chance of being found for your next job, meaning somebody will find you and offer you a job. So it is important. It depends, Beach Girl, what your um, profession is. And the, my problem with LinkedIn is it's not democratic. So the like like Google, YouTube, um, you know Twitter and whoever, they show you the stuff, right? If if I want to go live on a, on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or wherever, I could reach you if you're following me, even Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn doesn't allow that. LinkedIn has a select group of people that it allows to go live. It has a select. It it, it is now becoming incredibly restrictive to who's seeing my stuff. And so we've we've stopped using it in the format that we used to because of its, all of its restrictions as a body of editors that picks and chooses what it wants to share. It's very political. And I just, I just wanna, my view of the world is everybody gets to put their content out. I want you to choose. I do not want them to choose. And then there's different ways in which the search engine works and if you, Beach Girl, I would also point you to my video on how to get noticed on LinkedIn, and I show you the mechanics of what to do to increase your chances, but I don't know what your profession is, so so if I did, I could probably answer that a little bit better. Um, all right, Gail, I'm going for a final interview. Oh, yeah, I think I answered that one. Susanna, I have several interviews, like five in a month. Phone, for, uh, I'm a... Oh, are the, these are with different companies. Okay, five in a month, phone, first, second, but for some reason, no offers. I have no idea if it's your age. If you are over 40, you are still a youngster in my book. If you are over 50, that is not nearly a death sentence. And if you're over 60, same thing. So uh, I don't know. So there's always a concatenation to... Um, and, and Susanna, it goes for you and anybody else. Somebody will email me and say, well, I'm sending your boss hunting cover letter, but it's not working. Well, I don't know. Sending it to the right people? Are you, is the language the right? Are you, tar right? Is the resume look good? Is, I mean, like, there's like eight things that have to occur. So for you, uh, when you, when you're not getting offers, are you targeting the right companies? You obviously are getting interviews. So what that, what that sort of says is that your resume is decent, right? So you're getting you're getting opportunities. If you're getting a job interview, theoretically you're qualified. Otherwise, an employer is not going to take their time out to talk to you. Now, I don't know what you're doing in the interview. So, are you actually the most qualified? Maybe there's somebody else. Uh, are you you know Are you going through and responding to the questions effectively? Do your stories have power and all that good stuff? What I would highly recommend if you have not done it yet is watch three keys to ace any job interview that is an incredibly valuable you can watch it's on an on-demand webinar the other thing and i didn't even mention this but the interview intervention book is i mean if you chip in seven bucks for shipping and handling i send it anywhere in the world you get the book the ebook the audio book you get uh, another ebook called how to interview the employer 27 or sorry, 75 great questions to ask before you take any job. You get all the stuff, and I would look through that, and I would see what I was doing. It, it, whenever you enroll and you pay the seven bucks, you get the ebook, the audio book, the bonus book, and all that stuff right away. And you can get in, you know, we have a private LinkedIn group for, uh, for the Mile Walk Academy, and we have a private Facebook group, which you can get in uh, to, to as well. So I don't know, I don't know what the deal is, but no, my, my first answer is always that it's not your age. It's, it's not. I, we just, we see too many of these things where people plow through no matter what age they are. We had a woman, 60 years old, in media. She got in the boot camp. She said, you know, I left my job. 
I'm in dire straits. It doesn't look good. You know, this this industry's bad. They don't like this. They don't like old women. They don't like that. And so on. We got in, did a resume. I had a coaching session with her. She not only got a job, they expanded the role before she started to cover the entire US in media, in her space. She's in Chicagoland. It was out of New York. Like, this whole thing about like it's my age, there's no jobs out there, that's just not true. It's just not true. I'm not saying ageism isn't a thing. There are there are some components to that. But you can certainly combat that. And I've talked about it. Uh, I've got a, a, a video out there about job search advice for over 50-year-olds. It doesn't matter if you're 40, you can still watch it. I've got a, a video out there on um, on overcoming age discrimination in a job interview. I have some others that are related to that. I would I would take those in too. So I I would I would strongly suggest those. William Collins, you are well. Yes, awesome. Buddy, great to have you. I love that. By the way, if you are in the boot camp, you get a discount, a pretty good one on the leadership program. And actually pretty soon you're going to you guys are all going to be able to get another discount if you want, if coming soon. Avo, how you doing, my friend? After three interviews, now they have invited me for a panel interview. Yes, I have in, uh, recommendations for everybody. I have a video out there about how, oh God, I'm not going to remember the name, but it's basically, <laughs> you got to forgive me, man. There's almost 200 videos out there. Um, Avo, head to the YouTube channel, type panel interview in the, in the search bar. It'll come up right at the top, but how to ace the panel interview or best way to win the panel interview or something catchy like that. All right, Todd. Oh, great, Todd Bruss. Love your book and your course. Thank you. Question, how do you one best answer? What are your weaknesses? Todd, head to my YouTube channel, type in weakness. There's the video right there. I give you the answer for that one. It's a, you know, 10 minute, five minute video on that one. Mr. Mobius, okay, wait, Mr. Mobius. Some say hi just like to reach out and hire people. Yes, I was laid off. Should I leave my LinkedIn employment? Okay, Mr. Mobius, here's what I would do. Leave your LinkedIn as you are, you know, you could leave it to present or you could change it. It's entirely up to you. But here's what I always tell everybody. Good stuff happens to those people in motion. Meaning, it's better for you to send a message to a potential hiring official than to wait like three weeks and try to like make it perfect. Just get it out there. If you start sending messages to people and they, and they, you know, you have two present on your LinkedIn profile and you're not getting any responses, what do I do? I change it to done and then I try sending them again. And I see it's it it's it's just it you you all are in th those of you that are job searching are in the ultimate marketing exercise and marketing is testing and you got to keep track of what's happening. So if you send the boss hunting cover letter out and you're not getting hits, where am I sending it? Who am I sending it to? What's the resume I'm sending them? What's the exact language, right? And so on. You got to keep track of that stuff. Make some amendments to it. Try it again and see what's happening. Hey, this version is testing a little better than the others. We do that with you. We are psychotic about the way I write the emails, the language I use, the subject line I use. We have we have like emails that we send you guys, value emails, right? These not sa not sales emails I'm talking about. We'll put the subject line up. You get like 20% open rate. Change the subject line, same email, 45% open rate. Right? They're both saying they're they're telling you the truth of what's inside. People just like that one better. Okay? Get that. We'll use that from now on. Like, I mean, we do this all the time. You guys are you like it or not, you guys are very much like me in what I go through every day, running my business, just like with you with marketing yourself to 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 companies. Jenny Hinkle had a phone interview today. Oh man, <laughs> had a phone interview yesterday. Sorry, I'm a little bunch. And now they want to schedule a coffee interview. Sweet. Do you have any tips on how to handle a coffee interview? This will be my first coffee interview versus an in-office. Jenny, I'm dead serious when I'm saying this. 
just be you and don't spill your coffee on them. Okay, it, it's casual, right? It's, but you still, you still wanna make sure you're prepped. You got your stuff, you got your list. You know who the people are or the individual is. You know their bio, you know all the, same, same. Just, you know, try to make sure that it's in a place where you can think and drink and, you know, at the same time and that you're not in a loud environment. You wanna just make sure, don't, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Okay, wait. Uh, I want to give you... Yes, the the San Francisco meetup. Anybody who wants to stop on by, I'm happy to shake your hand or give you a hug or whatever you do. I'm a hugger. But um, we're going to be at the... Linda and I, my wife Linda, who spells her name with a Y, is uh, we're going to be at the pub. It's literally called The Pub in uh, Giardelli Square, it's on like Beach Street and it's three o'clock local time. That's just, you know, I need to, I need to do some work in the morning and go for my run. My wife will probably charge up our credit cards and while I'm working. So whoever asked the question about the boot camp and stuff, that's what I'll be doing in the morning. And then I'll go for my run and we'll grab some lunch and my wife and I will walk around to whatever the shops are that she wants to go. And then we're going to go and we'll meet you guys. And anybody who wants to come is I, I would love to say hello. I would love to meet you and I would love to introduce you to other people in the community and that would be great. And if you, a lot of you are going to be local, I would imagine, uh, then you get a chance to meet each other. And so I just thought it would be a great thing. And if you were in Chicago, we're going to be doing one of these too. So, but I just thought this would kind of be nice. And if you are on my email list, uh, Kara has probably scheduled it. You will get an email in the morning. If you go to the Mile Walk Academy calendar on the milewalkacademy.com page and just click calendar, I think the address and everything and the time is in there. And so you below the calendar, there are instructions on how to sync it to your, you're not subscribing for anything. You're just, you're syncing our calendar with your calendar. And so, you know, your little phone will pop up and it'll say, boop, live office hours, and there's a link and you can go right to it. So it's, it's, it's kind of neat. And then like in my calendar, so I have my calendar synced with that. And so there's a little purple dot that says free live office hours, show up Andy. You know what I mean? And then next week it says the pub at three o'clock on Friday or whatever. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. We're, I mean, we're doing everything we can to make your lives easier. So it's, um, it's pretty neat. And then if you're in the paid programs, there's also the dates for those, but Hey, even if you're not in the paid programs, you never know. You might want to, Hey, this leadership thing looks pretty cool. I should check it out. Hey, I I'm available that day. Maybe I'll, I'll jump in or whatever. I mean, so it's, it's, um, you know, we're doing whatever we can. All right. Sarah S who's a boot camper, had a phone interview last week, was told he would send me a questionnaire. Still have not received it. Should I continue to pursue? Yes. Sarah and everybody else. And Sarah, you know how much I love you because you're in the, you're, Sarah's in there. She's asking me the questions. She, she comes to the sessions and all that good stuff. It's always a matter of anybody, all of you, you're all, look, you're all good people. You all got big hearts. You want to do right by you, your families, and everybody else that you support. These companies that behave this way, that they don't do what they say they're going to do, they don't get back to you when they're supposed to, heck, they don't show up, right? We had one early on. They're not showing up for their interviews. That's a bad sign. But that doesn't mean you got to quit. I want you to keep all that in context. It is entirely up to you guys when you get in these situations whether you want to continue to pursue. So I get to a point in my life, and I know this is, you may think it's easier for me to say than it is for you to do, but you got to see some of the stuff I turned down, like with searches and other things that could be big recruitment fees. But I get to the point where I say, you're not behaving the way that I would really want. And as much as I would love and maybe need that revenue, need that money, need that relationship, I've got to stick to what I believe in. And I genuinely believe that people will treat you the way you coach them to treat you. Okay, so if you let them step on you, then they're gonna step on you. And I would not let companies do that to me if I was you. And I think you will be surprised. I know it's very stressful to search for a job. I had to do that once, right? Like I understand what this is like. So, but, but I think you might be surprised that when you stand your ground, good things are gonna happen. They really will. Whether it's, okay, you know, Sarah, what I would do, hey, I had a wonderful phone interview with the last week. I was super excited about this. 
so, you know, so and so or somebody or you said you were going to send me the questionnaire. I just want to follow up since I haven't received it. Now, if this is Friday last week and it's Thursday this week and we had a three, you know, you're in the U.S. So you had a, you know, you had a day off, um, you know, it's only three days into this week if it's Friday. Now, if it's Monday last week, that's the whole week, three days this week, you're getting, that's pretty stretching it. So I would say, okay, send them a message. By next Friday, if you don't have what they told you you were going to get, say, listen, I, I would probably call and say, hey, uh, I was really interested in the opportunity. It just seems like maybe it kind of fizzled out. I want you to know I'm still interested. You know, let me know if it's still available. And when they call you or email you, they better damn well have an explanation. Like there better be an apology. There's no apology. I would just say, you know what, thanks, but I'm moving on. And to be honest with you, I'll give you some feedback. But if this is how you behave in the recruitment process, I know that I would not want to work here. Let's be honest, folks, right? The recruitment process for a lot of these companies is the best it's ever going to be. Now, that's not true for all companies, right? The really great companies, they know how to pull you in and embrace you and help you grow. But you're seeing the signs. Don't be surprised if that's what it's like inside. So, and you know me, I want the best for you, Sarah. All right, Adam L. God, when do we get to Sam here? Jeez. Okay. Um, Adam L., should my resume focus on work experience or my recent gap, which has been spent doing a lot of professional development? I feel like my resume is coming off disorganized. Adam, first thing, don't sweat it. Career profile. Okay. Career profile. I got for all of you in gaps, like Adam or anybody who's had a gap somewhere along the way. So if you're working cool now, everything's going great, but you had like a three-year gap between 2012 and 2015 or whatever, this applies to you. So you go through your career profile. If you don't know how to write the career profile, go to the YouTube channel, type career profile. I've got a pretty sweet couple of videos and I show you exactly how to write it, okay? And there's a resume tips one where I show you samples. At the last, the back half are the, are the last sentence of the second paragraph, two paragraph career profile. The, the last sentence, you can just say, uh, returning to the workforce after performing professional development, doing whatever, whatever it was, give some context, between 2015 to, you know, to whatever, return since 2015. So returning to the workforce after uh, concentrating on professional development of whatever since 2015. That covers your gap. Now, you're going to have a professional experience section, right, a little below, that says something, something to 2015. That's okay. They know what you're doing. Now, if you want, instead of like, and I don't, you know, you, you've been working six years, I probably would have what you could do is independent, I don't know what your education looks like, but you could have your education or your professional development and education section right underneath the profile if you want to show some continuity there and it's excessive and it's powerful and it's germane to what you're doing. Like somebody who's going, who took time off to go to paralegal school, that's professional development to me, it's schooling, but who's switching from being an illegal administrator, or whatever, that matters. I would put that up top. If your professional development is germane to where you're going, put it up top. And when I say up top, I mean below the career profile and then go into your professional experience. That's what I would do. And any of you that are in a gap or had a gap in between, you can say, um, you know, performed family caretaking duties between 2012 to 2015 in your career profile. And then you don't need to explain it in the in the resume. It's already explained. They're not going to miss it if it's up top, up top and highlight that. Tui, how do I talk about tasks, activities that I did in one company without sounding like a robot? I would talk about my accomplishments. I would talk about my accomplishments. Tui, if you have not um, seen three secrets to get your resume noticed, that's your answer. Sam, finally got, did we get, wait, I got Sam here at 11. 16 and Carrie, you're giving me some additionals, so maybe am I caught up? Good God. All right, I'm, I'm gonna be late, but I'm gonna miss you guys. 
All right, listen, real quick. Uh-oh. Am I, if you got to refresh, go ahead. Uh, I hope I'm still going. Um, all right. Kara, I'm not, I'm not sure if my thing froze again. And I know we're getting to the end and I don't want to refresh it. Can you just tell me, am I still talking? Um, you're still going. Okay, I had to refresh a couple times. Okay, hopefully I'm still going. And folks, if you need to, refresh. Um, boot camp tomorrow. Check the live calendar. We got a leadership monthly on the 20th on building trust. In, in July, we're off the first week of live office hours because it's the 4th of July. I'm sure I'll be working, but we're off live office hours. And the 9th through the 11th, we have a workshop. And then we start another whole run of the boot camp on July 12th. And then it's like July 19th, July 26th, August 2nd, August 9th. So check those out. Grab your, grab your catalog so you f can find your way around the place. Um, grab the interview intervention book. It's chipping seven bucks. The thing's free otherwise. Um, all right, let me see if I can squeeze one more in here. Sam, best news, each prospect job screening discussion had you have solid resume. Awesome. Love it to hear. And then crew, I had three phone interviews this week. They all had salary caps. So I passed on the one hand, got three interviews coming up. Sam, don't pass on those. Don't pass on those. Don't worry about salary caps. I mean, unless it's like a government job, salary caps are continuously broken. Money can be created out of lots of different places. Don't kill it before you get into it. Okay, that just please don't do that. Uh, Shahab, should I apply for a job similar to one I have interviewed and haven't been accepted in the past in the same company? If you want. If you want, you never know. And I don't know how long ago it was that you didn't get it. Things could have changed. Requirements could have changed. The hiring official might be different and so on. Okay, folks, I don't know how many more questions there are, but I, I have got to run. Uh, I hope to see a bunch of you in San Francisco next Friday. Next Tuesday, you're going to get an email, uh, the normal digest. Tomorrow... If you want to get in the boot camp, um, and if you're here, we'll, you know, if you if you're already bought, enrolled in the boot camp, we'll credit you the hundred for for today. Um, and then let's see. And then on the twentieth, I got the leadership thing, and and well, we'll we'll be in touch. But check the check the live calendar. That's that's where I'll be. All right, everybody, have a great rest of the week and weekend. And uh, you'll see me in some form or fashion next week, not at the live office hours, but on Tuesday. And I will I'll be in touch with you soon. Take care.